two more main characters took time to tell me their stories during the summer Trey Rosemont was murdered. My name is Clayton Addison, and most days I was covered in sawdust, plaster dust, and regular dust the summer Trey Rosemont was murdered. Not too many months ago, I turned in my police chief's badge, then put up some retirement funds to purchase the Rosemont estate, long unoccupied and sadly deteriorating. The assumption that Trey Rosemont was dead, leaving the estate open for auction, was a bit premature by the courts. This reasoning belongs to the perfect vision of hindsight. The dead body at my feet inside the house brought homicide lieutenant Frank Elmore to my door. Elmore and I have a tainted history. This murder investigation was an opportunity of a lifetime for him. It has always been my opinion that while the cop may not be dirty, he, at the very least, smelled bad. As the man with the only key to the mansion's new locks, I became Elmore's suspect. As the man owning Trey Rosemont's birthright, which anyone would rightfully assume he wanted back, Elmer supplied my motivation to move Trey out of the picture again, and permanently. How the hell did Trey get murdered in my house? And how did the murderer lock Trey inside? My name is Georgie Crandall, and I was enjoying life as a traffic cop the summer Trey Rosemont was murdered. I played a pivotal role in the case. The contortionist in me is patting my back. I sniffed out information on the homicide and the theft of the Egyptian artifacts. Clay Addison is my good buddy, and Clay Addison is not a murderer. When he said, keep an eye on Rand Grayson, I was up to the test. When it was Sergeant Sherry Lippincott, my flaxen-haired beauty, who I needed to snuggle up to, I sucked in the extra 15 pounds draping my gun belt and moved in. It might be said around headquarters that I'm Clay Addison's inside man. Some use the word snitch. Without pause or equivocation, I claim covert operations specialist. It's classier. For days, progress went at an agonizingly slow pace on all three fronts. Rosemont's murder, Eastwood's theft, and any appreciation for the devoted attention I paid to Sergeant Sherry Lippincott, the absolute love of my life. Then it happened. I was there, sitting across the table, probably sending out superior crime-fighting vibes just as Rand reasoned out the connection between the two crimes. But how would she put proof behind her reasoning?